Just when Intel thought that Arrow Lake Refresh was going to be able to take the performance crown away from AMD, AMD are ready for a counterpunch. Yeah, that's right, the 9850X 3D is confirmed by AMD's official website to be a real thing, which, if you're unfamiliar, is basically a 9800X 3D, albeit with higher clock frequencies. But more importantly, this almost certainly means the 9950X 3D 2, which is a dual cache Ryzen, is also real. This leaves us with several questions. Questions. The first of which, what are the specifications of this chip and how do they compare against Arrow Lake Refresh? What should you do if you're considering upgrading? Should you perhaps just buy one of the Zen 5 processors right now? Should you buy the Refresh or maybe just skip everything and get Zen 6? And yeah, what about Zen 6? What's happening with that? Is it going to be delayed? What's the release? And so on and so forth. Well, we're going to get into all of that, plus some more stuff, after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. It's an end of an era. Windows 10 is now essentially dead in terms of its official support from Microsoft, and so now is the perfect time to upgrade to Windows 11, and you can do so without breaking the bank. This video's sponsor is WhoKeys, a regular on the channel, and I use WhoKeys myself for keys not just for Windows, but Microsoft Office and some other software to boot. Now, WhoKeys offers affordable and reliable Windows keys, and as you can see, here they offer Windows 11 Pro for just 32 US dollars and that is without our coupon code which we're going to get to in just a moment. This is a huge saving over the official price which is around 140 US dollars leaving you a lot more budget left over for well you know better things let's be honest like buying a more powerful graphics card or processor, or perhaps even you can shell out on some RGB lighting. Don't do that, save it for your GPU, but that's just my personal opinion. Anyway, if you use our coupon code during checkout, this will save you an additional 25% from this massively discounted already price. This means you can buy Windows 11 Pro for just 23 US dollars, saving you an almost another eight bucks. Now, personally, I do recommend that you do pick up Windows 11 Pro, but you could pick up Home instead, which with the code is gonna cost you just 22 US dollars. The reason I personally would go with Windows 11 Pro uh, is I think for power users, which is typically what of course uh, is the demographic of this channel, you get a lot more control, security and business tools. But I also really like some of the features and functionality such as Hyper-V, which is really nice for virtual machines. It's actually really powerful. And if you want a bit of fun, you can certainly mess around with that. I'd actually highly advise it. Anyway, if you do want a more simple and lighter experience, you can just go with a Windows 11 Home. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I have used Hookies myself for a lot of different rigs at this point and also pushed them to my friends and no one had any issue. Within just a few minutes of you using the checkout, you will receive your uh, code via email and you can also access it via the website. And uh, yeah, you just plonk it in and there are absolutely no issues with activation. And of course, if you do have any problems, they do have 24 seven support to help you out as well. In addition to Windows 11, um, they do also offer various other software such as Steam games and Microsoft Office, and there are massive discounts on Microsoft Office packages as well, which can be really handy. You can find links to their website in the video description. You can, of course, just use our coupon code, which once again is RGT to save an additional 25% off of the listed prices. Thanks again to Hookies for sponsoring the video. And now let's just get back on with the content. So now that I've got my glasses on so I can actually read things, here, of course, there are no official uh, specifications, at least right now, for the 9850X3D, but we can probably guess, given the rumor and given the fact that it's a higher number, the clock frequencies would be true. If we compare here the boost clocks um, on WCCF Tech, um, you can see that there's around a 400 megahertz increase. We've seen numbers, everything from a couple of hundred megahertz up to 400 megahertz. Regardless, we can essentially say that this is slightly faster. More importantly, everything else is identical. So for example, the supported memory allegedly is the same. It would be awesome if it went faster, but it's just not very likely because basically it seems like they're reusing pretty much all of the same silicon, albeit silicon brewers at faster speeds. Meanwhile, and this is the one that has not been officially confirmed yet, but it's very likely because the same uh, reports that stated this was coming out, the 9850X3D, also stated this is coming out. I still don't really like the name, although I suppose you can't really argue that it tells you exactly what's in the tin, so to speak. But while the clock frequency is down a little bit, boo, cash is up a lot. 
Yay! And of course the cash in this case is the V cash. Now I don't think this is going to have big ramifications for gaming. I would love to be proven wrong. It would be awesome if it did. But realistically, it's going to mostly help certain productivity apps. And if you're, you know, doing some kind of let's say stuff from home i i can certainly imagine it but with a 9950x3d um, um obviously you have a uh vcash ccd and a vanilla ccd and generally amd software along with windows scheduler does an okay job keeping games uh, pinned to the correct ccd <sighs> But uh, it doesn't always. There are ways of improving that. I cover this actually on Resample Pixels, which is my second YouTube channel, for those who don't know. I do a lot of reviews and testing and stuff on that. It's just started. But, you know, thanks to those who have subscribed. If you would like to subscribe or check out the latest couple of videos, we'll actually go into this more in depth. I was messing around with CPU sets. That's a long story short. Um, there is definitely a performance improvement using CPU set setter. Uh, and pinning games, um, some games actually have a significant performance increase, I think, and this is from memory, I don't have the benchmarks in front of me right now, but I think, for example, testing Counter-Strike 2, I got like 150-ish extra FPS, and there are a couple other games that saw significant performance increases. There are other ways of doing it, like you can use um, uh, Process Lasso, or um, you could disable things using Ryzen Master, but ultimately CPU set size is a lot easier, at least in my personal opinion. By the way, this is not sponsored for those who don't know it's a free utility. Uh, I'll leave a link to this in the video description. Either way, uh, my point is for games, the 9950X3D um, is probably going to be okay if you're just looking to be like a streamer and like use gaming for the 9950X3D Vcash and then the other... Uh, the other CCD can basically do whatever. But this, for productivity work and just having the fastest processor on the market, because I think this is going to easily outperform this. So this is the Arrow Lake Refresh. Now, this has somewhat been confirmed by Intel. I suspect the fact that this has been confirmed. When was this one confirmed? This was confirmed on 25th. So I wouldn't be surprised if AMD confirming this was an accidentally on purpose because Intel have confirmed this. This is kind of how some st sometimes this stuff works. But with regard to this, you can see that 7200 MTS is basically confirmed here under the refresh. The rumored specifications of Arrow Lake refresh are, well, here. Now, there's two um, major improvements in performance. The first would be the high memory speed which is supported so 7200 versus 64 although to be fair most uh, intel processors can support higher speeds although obviously there is whether it's in gear one or two and blah 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 but i think this perhaps is going to be more interesting um now the 290k there's basically a hundred megahertz difference in tvb but e cores run a couple of hundred megahertz faster Again, e-cores don't necessarily improve gaming performance, but if you're doing like productivity work and so on, it can be kind of nice. But the 270K and the 250K both feature higher numbers of e-cores. Now, it's going to be interesting. Uh, there's no, been no leaks regarding the price at the moment. Uh, Intel have actually done some really nice deals with the 265K um, over the last few months. So it's going to be very interesting to see what deals they do on the 270k and whether or not this is just essentially a replacement of the 265k and uh, the 250k replacing the 245k. That's going to be interesting, at least in my personal opinion. Of course, and WC, uh, sorry, videocards.com rightly point this out, this plus series is also going to be the last processors which are available on LGA 1851. Now, that's a little bit different to, I'm looking for something, there we go, this. So let's move on to Zen 6. Um, various motherboard manufacturers have now confirmed that Zen 6 is going to support it on AM5. Now, this is not new information. We've known that this is going to be the case for quite some time. But, again, additional confirmation is always good in these things. I won't really speak about this too much, but now Colorful are confirming this with their really cute little BIOS. Now, when is Zen 6 going to release? Almost certainly, the latest it's going to release is the second half of 2027, based on roadmaps. However, it's possible it could release a little bit earlier. 
Now, if we poke our way to WCCF Tech, uh, where are you? Sorry, I'm I'm fighting. I'm fighting the internet here. Where are you? Do 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 do. I think I'm missing it. Ah, sorry. I was just being totally blind and just scrolling by it over and over again. Um, you see, Medusa here is listed, and it is under the 2027 window. Furthermore, um, this is on Tom's hardware, and this is actually from a roadmap which was from an Italian Soleno, an Italian um, Italian uh, laptop manufacturer. Now, under 2027, you can see Medusa Point. Now, remember, Medusa, I'll show you the full article here. Um, this was actually leaked initially by x86 dead and back. But this is the thing. Um, and hardware busters actually somewhat point this out as well. Because AMD have confirmed that Medusa, um, you know, is going to launch obviously and all of their roadmaps do somewhat point to a 2027 release from medusa but this is also quite interesting now if we scroll down just a little bit i'm going to make that a little larger for you guys medusa zen 6 open sill support is scheduled for the first half of 2027 now for those who don't know open sill basically AMD's BIOS, albeit it's a later firmware. Now, the reason that that's important is technically speaking, OpenSIL could launch after the desktop processors are launched. So I still think that this does mean there's a possibility Zen 6 customer could launch in 2026. Uh, and to be clear here, that's for desktop. I've actually heard a few different release dates, honestly, guys. I've heard uh, Q4 2026 for now stop, and mobile coming in, you know, the early part of um, 27, so I'm getting my years mixed up here. And then the Vcash processors for desktop launching, you know, in the first half of 2027. So you have desktop releasing first, the vanilla chips. Then you have mobile. And then a little bit later, you have the Vcash. But then I've also heard that maybe AMD are considering delaying this because of all of the productivity, um, sorry, all the production capacity, everything else is just going crazy right now. So they want to divert as much as possible. It's really difficult to know. Again, this is going to be kind of a gamble because now we're left with the question, should you just upgrade now? <sighs> I think it really does depend on what processor you've got. From my perspective, I've got a 9950X3D um the you know the standard one and i'm certainly not going to be buying the 9950x3d2 um i would imagine and this is not a leak but i just don't imagine i'm gonna think that cheaper uh, i think it's going to be like a quite an expensive processor now it's going to be very interesting to me to see if the x3d2 is real what the how how people um you know embrace that it, it's definitely going to be the fastest processor um I, I'll be very interested to see what happens with the memory shortages as well, because ultimately, like the memory is the thing that's absolutely killing it at the moment. There are a lot of rumours that AMD are going to start. Sorry, um, sorry, memory manufacturers are going to start to increase availability. Remember, we had actually, well, they had the reverse problem several months ago. You can just Google this. I can't remember exactly, but certainly in like the you know we were seeing a lot of stories where they were actually reducing memory supply. Because and, and this is not just, you know, standard RAM either, by the way. We're talking about NAND as well. They were starting to reduce it, if you recall. So now it's like, ka -ching! They can basically cash in. And I do think the AI uh, bubble, or even if it's not a bubble, let's just say demand, is definitely, you know, one of the reasons we're seeing the prices ramp up. But the fact that they'd ramp down supply deliberately because, you know, they just weren't selling it as fast as they'd hoped... Well, I'll leave you guys to talk about it in the comments. Um, yeah, let's, let's just be honest, though. It's it's not... Um, if you see, you know, if you see your house on fire and someone standing at the side with a flamethrower, you can say, well, maybe he's just an innocent passerby, but... <laughs> 
you also might wonder to yourself, hmm, that looks a bit suspicious. So I'll leave you, I'll leave you guys to decide that in the comments. But uh, yeah, um, I really hope that memory does start to improve because ultimately, you know, no matter what happens, if memory doesn't increase, like even if Intel tomorrow release like you know G thirty one Battle Mage. And it's like insanely fast. If they can't get memory cheap enough, it's not going to be a great deal anyway. And obviously that is going to extend as well, as we've talked about a billion times into consoles. It's going to impact a lot of stuff. So I just don't want anyone to be priced out of the market. It's just going to suck ass. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.